member of the board of trustees of the Foundation for the University of Schottland. <laughs> Professor Dr. Norbert Weber, president of Silver Network and chairman of Forest Policy and Forest Resource Economics, Technical University of Dresden. <laughs> Sandra Lieber, secretary general of Silver Network, University of Technology Dresden. Dr. Mika Rekola, office holder of the International Union of Forest Research Organizations, UFRO, from the University of Helsinki, who joins us uh, online. <laughs> Dr. Cornel Zimber, Vice Dean for Research and Foreign Affairs at the Faculty of Forestry of the University of Schottland. Dr. Gabor Kovács, Vice Dean for Education at the Faculty of Forestry of the University of Chopron. And Dr. Jula Sándor, Director General of the Educational Forestry Limited Company Chopron, which will host our uh, field trip in the morning on Thursday. And of course, also a warm welcome to all the members of Silva Network, professors, colleagues, and students from our university, and to all forestry and agricultural professionals who joined us on site and online. Before I hand over to floor to our, the floor to our vice rector's greeting, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all of you who generously helped us make this event come together to become a success. Special thanks go to, at first, of course, to Sandra Lieber, Secretary General of uh, Silva Network, and to Dr. Ferenc Fachko, head of our Dean's Office of the Faculty of Forestry. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thanks, of course, to all of our colleagues who uh, joined in some way to help uh, with the preparations to, to make it a success. And now, Professor Lakatos, I would like to ask you to give your greetings. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, so it's a great honor for me to welcome you in the name of the University of Chopron here in Chopron at this very nice conference center Lignon. So as I have had the honor already a few times to attend Silver Network conferences since I was a dean of the Faculty of Forestry, it's really a honor for me to see so many already well-known faces but I'm also very uh, happy to see, to see some new faces. It means that the Silver Network is still developing and having new and new members. It has been even shown and presented by uh, Balint Hell that we have more than 150 particip participants from across the globe, from several countries, from at least three continents. And uh, after uh, the COVID era, when we had only online meetings with uh, facing the screen and, and talking to the screen without any feedback from, from the faces and, and not even a feedback from the students during the lectures, uh, it's really great to have so many faces smi uh, seeing smiling and, and to be there. Uh, as the topic of the conference will be communication as a key factor for, in the forestry and forestry education. I think the, the personal communication is a really key factor. So just to have the possibility to, first of all, definitely to listen to, to the lectures and presentations we will have today and tomorrow, but even the, the coffee break is one of the major points of the conferences when you can freely discuss your thoughts and, and you can even uh, go to the colleagues and ask them specific questions and you definitely will have some, some feedback on that. So I, I really like the in-person conferences in, in any topics. And I think, uh, yeah, one and a half day here in Schopland followed by, I think, a very interesting excursion afterwards in the area of the study forestry company will definitely a, a, a memory for you 
that I've been to Shopron one time back and I, I visited a very nice conference here with very nice presentations and even some <clears throat> uh, meeting some, some very nice people. I still do have some contacts with them and that's that's a great opportunity to, to have new contacts and to have new <clears throat> interactions with people. So that's why the University of Shopron is always keen on having uh, uh, meetings like this one. And even if our name has changed several times, our structures changed several times, the last one was even two and a half years ago, maybe you will get some more information about that uh, in one of the next uh, welcoming speeches. <clears throat> but still, uh, the, the major, the core points of the university remain the same. So the Faculty of Forestry, the Faculty of Wood Technology and Creative Industries, which has no two additional uh, faculties. So we have also the Faculty of Economics and Faculty of Pedagogy. So currently those four faculties are uh, the faculties of the University of Chopron, having approximately 2,600 students, which means a tiny small university in the middle of, of Central Europe, but still uh, a very old uh, history, a very long uh, history with very old tradition where we are really proud of, for example, the, the student traditions, which are on the UNESCO culture, cultural heritage list as well. So I think Chopin is uh, a unique place, not only because of its uh, geographical locations that the uh, Vienna International Airport is less than one hour drive from here, but also the, the locations here just uh, across, the, uh, just close to the Austrian border, and in a very unique environment when uh, we can teach uh, to our forestry students almost all kind of forest types we do have in Hungary. And, and hopefully you will see some of them in, in the field excursion on, on Thursday. So I think uh, this is an opportunity we, to, we should really use to make the University of Chopron even more uh, internationally acknowledged as it is now. Uh, just to let you know, at the moment we have approximately 150 international students. Some, uh, several of them are sitting here now. Most of them are PhD students, so welcome. <clears throat> but we try to incre increase this number uh, in the future and uh, to organize this kind of meetings is one point of them. And as uh, Silver Network is mainly dealing with uh, forest higher education issues, I think this is the right place to have this uh, conference now here in Chopron. So just to keep me short, because even if it's uh, there are some 40 minutes for the welcome speeches, I think we don't need to use, uh, I don't need to use all these 40 minutes. I should leave some, uh, some minutes for the other colleagues as well. So I wish you a successful and great meeting here in Chopron. And I wish you when you leave, um, <clears throat> on Thursday afternoon, then, then uh, you will leave with good memories and you will remain, uh, you will keep Chopron in, in your memories. As it was a good place, it was a good meaning, meeting, it's worth to come back again. So thank you very much for your attention and good luck. Thank you, Professor. And uh, before I hand over uh, this place to uh, Dr. Choka, uh, let me uh, introduce him with uh, a few sentences. Uh, Dr. Peter Choka is a member of the trustees of our uh, university foundation. Mr. Choka has been deputy head of the Forest Economics Policy and Products Division in FAO and secretary of the Committee on Forestry for years. He is a forester and system analyst by education. He has over 30 years of experience in forestry and worked at the Secretariat of the United Nations Forum on Forests, was head of the State Forest Service of Hungary, and was Director General for Natural Resources at the Ministry of Agriculture. Please, Mr. Choka, you're welcome to give your greetings. Thank you very much, Barint. Uh, dear colleagues, good afternoon. It's really a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I used to be a student of this university some 40 years ago, and I was listening to uh, the introduction of the dean here, which I truly appreciate. 
I realized how bad it feels when they say that you were, you were, you were, but you're not. And this is the case that I'm already retired. I left FAO at the end of the last year. So anything that can be said about me is in past tense. Doesn't feel good, I'm telling you. But uh, I try to uh, continue uh, and pick up the line uh, that uh, Ferenc dropped here regarding the location of Chopron and the university. Indeed, this is uh, a rather old university, not as old as some of the ones you are representing here, but over 200 years of history is, is not juvenile anymore. So we are very proud of that. But in its current form, it's rather new uh, because it, as Ferenc mentioned, has been transformed over two years ago into a private university. This has been a big experiment in, uh, in Hungary. Several institutions uh, changed their ownership and from state-run universities, they were converted into private. One Chopin is one of those. And while this transition took place, it became <clears throat> smaller than it used to be, considerably smaller and curricula-wise more focused. And uh, this we consider as a huge opportunity uh, because here in this university, we have a rather narrow focus built somehow around forests, but uh, representing the, the, the complexity of the issues related to forests, because this is not only about forest management and silviculture, but also all wood related disciplines are being taught here. And what I consider very important and, and very interesting and unique that we have economics here within the walls of this institution. And I think uh, many of you would agree with me by saying that most of the problems of forestry actually lie not in nature, but in the economic system that forestry is practiced. And this is, uh, this is a rather unique university because here you can look at silviculture, but you can also look at the economical side of silviculture. You can look at wood industry, but also the economical side of it. This, this is rather unique. And if you are talking about payment for ecosystem services, green financing, all these kind of things that are so fashionable these days, where is this? This is in the economics. And I think this is, this is something that uh, would allow Chopron for uh, evolve and excel on these fields. And getting closer to the subject of this conference, education. Uh, education is very important. Of course, university is about education, but it's not about professional education. It's about that is teaching. It's about educating the public, the general public, and having the pedagogy here in the, in, in the curriculum. This is a fantastic opportunity because through this, we can talk to people at the youngest ages, nurseries, primary schools, where the environmental education and the environmental awareness must start. This is how we can get people who are able to listen. We are always talking about sensitizing the politicians, very important, obviously, but we must sensitize the people first because the politicians is just a thin layer, very important, but just a thin layer of the society. People what matters. And if people are not aware of nature, if they don't understand nature, they are not able to make the right decisions or pick people who are making the right decisions. So this is how this pyramid is built up. And if you are not paying attention to the to the foundation, the pyramid will be shaky, as we see it shaking pretty much every day. So we believe that the university has wonderful opportunities here, but I'm not saying that this is a a very smooth ride here, not at all. Running a private university is not easy. There are a lot of things uh, that needs to be done. There is the infrastructure, there is the curricula. Everything needs to be reformed, revised, modernized, and everything is needed at the same time. And none of these are happening from one day to the other. So you need to maintain also the trust that these changes are bringing fruits one day. And you should not lose energy. You should not lose the uh, the motivation to, to, to follow the quest and follow your aims along the way. And sometimes this is easier said than done. So for us uh, as, as the Board of Trustees, this is something that is a wonderful opportunity that we can lead, but actually the work itself is to be done here in the university and in the company by the colleagues who are wearing the managerial positions all the way down to the students, because they also must be on board. Without them, nothing going to happen. There will be no important university. So what takes us to this board is really this, this belief and this conviction that we are able to help moving to the right direction. And what is the right direction? If, if you allow me to move a little bit 
to buy X workplace FAO, which have been which has been uh, quite active in, in in both communication and education, especially over the last years. Let me just recall one very important study that was finished not that long time ago, uh, thanks to the generous support of Germany. We were able to uh, conduct a global survey uh, of the situation of forestry education worldwide. I'm sure that many of you have participated in the work. Many of you know the uh, the outcome report. And of course, I don't want to go into the details having Nico Recco on the call because he was one of the key uh, persons there, Terve Miko. Uh, I think it's 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 a piece of reading that everybody who is dealing with, uh, with education needs to be read and the conclusions uh, be drawn there and implemented in the daily life. I think this is uh, this is a fundamental work and we at FAO were very proud uh, to be part of that. But not only that, we've been working on, 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 on people of the youngest ages. Uh, again, uh, with support from Germany, we started developing textbooks for the, for the youngest from one to class uh, seven, I guess, about forests, about the environment, and uh, using the German method as the uh, the starting point, we try to we are trying to uh, adopt and convert it to other continents. To Africa, we have Tanzania as a partner there. We are looking at the Philippines in Asia as a starting point, and then uh, we are also looking for opportunities in Latin America to do the same in the coming years. Of course, this takes time and takes money. Uh, time we normally have money. I can't claim the same, I guess. Uh, but uh, this is uh, this is very important because somehow education drifted or shifted to the side over the years, especially in FAO in 2009, there was a streamlined decision by which uh, education became uh, a secondary issue, claim, issue claiming that the organization doesn't uh, or shouldn't have it in its focus. But what happened as a result, this shifted also to the side in the intergovernmental policy negotiations. There were less and less discussions about forestry education in, in FAO and in the UN system in general. So by these projects, we were able to bring it back to the mainstream. And yes, there are no huge resources allocated to that yet, but at least the attention has been done, drawn to it. And there is a conclusion that Yes, education uh, is a crucial issue and it should not start at the age of 18. It should start at the age of two. Then you will have people who understand what is the nature around us. Otherwise, people will believe that uh, the world is built on these computers and the cell phones and stuff like that and chat GPT and things like that. And they don't know anything about the, the world that we are destroying step by step right away. And then let me uh, conclude by recalling one, to me, very interesting discussion about education and communication that took place at the 15th World Forestry Congress and in the way uh, leading to it. Uh, I'm sure that you uh, have been following this and, and, and know the outcome quite a bit, but I would like to mention to you that youth has played an extremely important role in the preparation for this Congress. And they had their own process and they were working hard for almost a year to come up with a sort of a motto or, or, or set of recommendations for education, which is called the Youth Call for Action. This was developed through six regional webinars or workshops. I have attended all of them. That was super interesting, talking to kids in Asia, in Latin America, everywhere. And they were coming up with very valid points, very interesting observations, and they come up with one very important recommendation. And that is that, uh, let me read this out because uh, I think it's very important to remember uh, this, they say that we, the youth, identify limited career development programs and in many cases outdated academic programs for forest education, which do not sufficiently prepare us to enter the workforce and develop our careers in the forest sector. Adapting to a dynamic and evolving forest sector also implies adapting training and education to evolving requirements such as mechanized harvesting and increased communication with forest users. Financial support for forest training is needed as these are becoming increasingly expensive due to the low ratio of pupils and the necessary training material, such as forest machines and equipments, safety and logistic costs and new technologies. 
So what are the young guys saying? They don't want power. They don't want influence. They don't want money. What they want is knowledge. What they want is perspective. What they want is a scenario that they can follow, they can grow into. And once they have it, once they are properly prepared for this job, for this career, they will do the job for us. I hope this because I did my part already, so there's not much left for me to do. But I truly appreciate it because everybody's asking for money. Everybody's asking for power. It's not what matters. What matters is that you are equipped with everything you need to have to be able to do a good job. And once you have it, you will be doing a good job. And this is what these guys are asking. So why I'm quoting this outcome from the World Forest Congress to you is, I'm sure that you're hearing this every day as educators, as teachers, but you hear it, please listen to it because the goodwill is there, the future is secured, we have the mental capacity, we have the commitment, we have everything, but we must nurture it, we must nurture it well. And this is why this discussion here today and the coming two days will enable you and everybody who's participating to be a little bit more into this business. And I'm sure you have already been into the business quite a bit, but take inspiration from the young guys and have them to follow their quest, then there will be everything okay. And next time when the uh, meeting meets here or elsewhere, you can conclude that ah, we had a great job over the last five years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we do share our screen with the online participants. It should work. Okay. Okay, thanks. Let me introduce you the Faculty of Forestry. Last year in Dublin, uh, I could already report about these changes which were mentioned by Dr. Choka uh, of the higher education in total in Hungary and of course, uh, as a part of it, uh, the higher education here uh, of forestry in Chopron. So therefore, a few of the slides might be uh, familiar to some of you, but on the one hand, here we have the opportunity to uh, share it with a much wider audience. And on the other hand, I would like to present recent developments uh, that have taken place at our faculty in the past year. When the technique works, I will be able. No, it works. Good. Thank you. So from this diagram of the faculty, uh, we can see that uh, our organizational structure has been adapted mostly to the education. For each of the study programs we have, uh, the in, uh, one institute can be assigned which best fits it, uh, it with uh, its educational and research portfolio. And if we uh, name all of them, all the four, Classical forestry uh, training and research takes place in the Institute of Natural Resources and Forest Management. The Surveyor and Land Management Engineering BSc program, which is one of our uh, most dynamically developing programs, is based on classical foundations, but uh, undergoing extremely rapid digital modernization. This belongs to the Institute of Geomatics and Civil Engineering. But here, of course, uh, we can also find some classic engineering disciplines such as water management, road construction. Our biggest institute is uh, the Institute of Environmental Protection and Nature Conservation, 
which covers mostly the BSc and MSc programs of both directions, environmental engineering and nature conservation engineering. This uh, institute was uh, built up by merging formal institutes like mm -hmm. botany, soil science, chemistry, and a part of the civil engineering institute. But again, a simple match can be made between the Institute of Wildlife Management and Game Biology. Uh, and Game Biology and our study program of wildlife managers. An important cornerstone of uh, these developments of this reform was that we try to harmonize not only the higher education to the forestry practice, but uh, also the higher education with the palette of both the incoming and the outgoing sites. This means, uh, with the help of our additional partners assigned here, uh, uh, which are also assigned to the new foundational system of the university, we are working to create harmony in the entire forestry sector, uh, in the entire range of education and practice. And as Mr. Choka mentioned, it's important to start in an age of two. I can proudly say we are able to start at least at the age of three with our faculty of pedagogy in, uh, at Chopra University. We will see some example for the cooperation between our, uh, between our faculties. Since the last summer, since we have met in Dublin, the Forest Knowledge Center has gained its fully of official status and has already started in fall 2022 the education of secondary vocational workers in forestry and wood technology. We are now making preparations to start with the training of secondary school forestry technicians in different locations of Hungary from September 2023 on. Our colleagues from the Forest Research Institute have started participating in forestry education, primarily in the field of forest economics. And of course, we from the Faculty of Forestry were able to join their significant research programs. And our international guests will have the opportunity to learn more about our cooperation with the Forestry Educational Company here in Chopron on Thursday morning during our field trip. And I have to uh, correct myself. I haven't uh, uh, have forgotten to mention an important uh, fact that uh, Mr. Jula uh, uh, Sándor uh, is not only the director general of this forestry limited uh, forestry limited company, but he got uh, so uh, a few weeks ago a member of the board of trustees of, uh, of the university. As an uh, as, uh, associate professor of our faculty, I mean uh, it's uh, an optimal surrounding uh, for this harmonization process. I mean, it's no exaggeration to say that during the higher education reform process, we really did address the whole forestry sector in the entire territory of Hungary. We do really believe that this helped to gain some visibility and increased our popularity among secondary school students preparing for university admissions. Numbers of the last three years give a slight indication of some positive moves. What you see are uh, the, uh, the colors. The, the, uh, the colors indicate the years 2021 uh, blue, 2022 is orange, and 2023 is gray. And we see the number of attendees who want, want to join our university and who placed our university in the first row in, in the order uh, they mean, uh, they, I think they, they really want to join us. And we see uh, uh, an incline uh, of, the, of the numbers. So I hope uh, we have a positive outcome of this process. And with uh, this positive outcome, I would like to hand over the floor to President of uh, Silva Network, to Professor Norbert Weber.
and again we do share with our colleagues online. Okay, just a second. We have to, to try that our colleagues really do see us. Takes a few seconds. Okay. Distinguished hosts, distinguished guests of this meeting, education matters, I think. Thank you very much. I think Peter Choka put the right question or asked the right question, what we can do to improve the situation and Silver Network for 35 years now is dedicated to forestry education. I'm very happy that our founding president, Peter uh, Schmidt, is also uh, participating at least uh, outside uh, as an external participant. So how can I come to the next slide, please? So this is a little bit tricky, especially if you have online guests. Okay. Should take some seconds. Okay, this one. Okay, thank you. So, for many years, committed to improvement of teaching and learning in forest sciences. And this is special with Silva Network because our intention is not to talk about students, but to talk with students. And that is why I'm very happy that we have students in the group today as well. So, um, every year when we organize a new conference, we are uh, in sorrow if we will have enough participants. And when I see such a big group here, I'm very proud uh, what our local organizer has managed. So let's give a hand to our local organizer. This was the first thing that uh, should be mentioned here. So, Silver Network summary. Uh, we are part of another international organization, ICA. ICA has several standing committees and ICA is a um, kind of cooperation of universities of life sciences. And one of these standing committees is ICA. We comprise about 50 universities and universities of applied sciences from Europe and some of Asia. And uh, these universities, many of them are not very active, but we are happy to have them as members. And some of them are make silver their own um, network, so they use the potential of silver 
and that is what we can see during this meeting as well. What is our mission? Our mission is to optimize teaching and learning in forest sciences and related study programs. Related study programs because, as you may know, in many countries there is not a forestry program as such. So, for example, in the Netherlands we have forestry and nature conservation combined in a study program, or sometimes forestry is a part of environmental education. But uh, our purpose is to exchange experiences on innovative forms of teaching and learning. And of course, we want to involve students' expertise to a great extent. There have been a lot of results during recent decades, for example, exchange programs. That was the beginning of Silva, an exchange of lecturers and an exchange of students. And then more and more multinational curricula have been developed. For example, this Master of European Forestry um, as a combination of programs of different participating universities in different countries, annual conferences, and what we are very proud about are these uh, reviewed proceedings. You can find a few copies outside if they have not been uh, picked up by somebody else. But if you are interested in a previous copy of the proceedings, I can show you here. Um, the typical cover of these proceedings. If you need to have a copy of previous proceedings, please uh, write an email to uh, Sandra Lieval and we will send you such a copy. What were our recent conferences? We had, due to Corona, only an online conference in 2021, Digitalization in Higher Forestry Education. The proceedings will be published uh, in a few weeks. I'm sure that we will uh, that we can finish this proceedings volume soon. Last year we met in Dublin, so our local organizer Marie Doyle and her team gave us the possibility to talk about higher forestry education in times of multiple crisis. So. Corona was not the only crisis during uh, recent years, and that is why we said this is an interesting topic to talk about within Silver Network. Um, I'm proud about that we now are an observer country, uh, not observer country, but observer organization of uh, Forest Europe. Forest Europe is the pan-European ministerial process for the protection and sustainable forest uh, management. And uh, the previous name was Ministerial Conference for the Protection of Forests in Europe. Now it's Forest Europe. And um, I'm also happy to hear that some universities, when they hear the first time about Silver Network, they say, oh, we are interested in becoming a member and in Last year, we had a new member that is the University of the Highlands and Islands in Inverness in Scotland. And, of course, this is the second one and the most uh, striving uh, cooperation, the cooperation with Sopron, Sopron University. And uh, that is why this meeting takes place here this year. So, what are the challenges? We have a lot of challenges because during the, during the year, not so much happens with Silver Network. So, uh, it's very quiet and uh, we have only a low amount of active members. And that's problematic for every network. You know, you need active members to keep a network alive. And uh, this is sometimes not so easy to find people who are also willing to do a little bit of work for our network to support the network. Um, cooperation with and delineation to similar networks on higher forestry education, you know, there's, for example, the 
organization of the deans and directors of forest universities. So in previous times, it was not so clear what the task of our group is and what the task of the other group is. We had a common meeting in 2013 in Istanbul, in Turkey, where we were talking together and we saw that we have similar aims and there was a friendly recognition of the other side and I'm not so sure what happened now with the conference of deans and directors. It was very quiet about them. Anyway, so they had, of course, uh, also an, an important role in uh, forestry education. And what many of us have in mind is the lost cooperation to our Russian uh, partners. So we have been to St. Petersburg um, several times, for example. We had friends and colleagues there. Our cooperation was really uh, successful. And now at the moment, we, we had to suspend all of this kind of cooperation. And that's a pity. Forestry education is more than teaching. So uh, this is a quote of a German scientist, forest scientist, who was working in Tarant. So I can say at this moment that I also send you greetings as head of the Department of Forest Sciences at the Faculty of Environmental Sciences in Dresden. I also send you greetings here. But now the, the quote, students should not only become acquainted with the material necessary for their professional science, but should also acquire so much insight, judgment and skill that when driven by their own desire or profession, they will be able to stand on their own feet and help themselves further. I like this quote, this quote because it shows our responsibility for education, not just teaching, but to give values to people of the young generation and to help them to come up with difficulties we cannot foresee. Because when they are in their job, there will be difficulties we cannot foresee at the moment, but they have to be equipped they have to be equipped to deal with difficulties of the future. So, I think uh, this event should highlight that um, it is possible, even in post-COVID times, to organize gorgeous conferences. And I think this is a gorgeous conference. You might think uh, why he is now giving such amount of, of uh, positive words about the conference. The conference did not yet happen. It is not yet at the end. But everybody who knows how much work is involved in preparing a conference knows that it's justified to say at the moment uh, that a great work has been done. So thanks a lot to Balint and his team for being a perfect local organizer and also to Sandra as a general secretary for organizing so many things in advance of the conference. And I think um, we should give them a hand. And the last slide here. Thank you very much for your attention. You see here the Contact addresses become minussilver.eu and our email addresses. I wish all of you a lot of interesting insights into questions of forestry education, a lot of personal talks. This makes the difference to online meetings, the personal talks during the coffee break, and so on. And I hope that we will go back with a good feeling that it was worth to join the Silver Network Conference in 2023 in Chopron. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, for your kind words. And yes, we like to try now to, to switch over to our colleague Mika Rekola, uh, as this conference is uh, a joint uh, event of uh, Silver Network and UFRO. Uh, Mr. Rekola, as a, a representative of uh, UFRO, will give us a, a short greeting from at home. And I ask you, Mika, to share your screen. I see you are even faster than us. I hope that uh, you can go on with your presentation. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Malin. And hello, everyone from Helsinki, Finland. Um, it's really pity. I'm really sorry that I, I couldn't make this trip. I would really like to, to be there. Uh, unfortunately, there are some personal reasons which uh, make this impossible. May I, that is, our home is under a huge renovation and it was it wasn't simply not possible to travel right now. Uh, luckily, I, I could do this very short announcement from you for side using the Teams system. So um, my name is Mika Rekolaman, working as a university lecturer and master program director here at the University of Helsinki. And I'm the coordinator of EU for Forest Education Research Group, uh, RT609. And who else we have with this group? Um, I have uh, four, uh, three deputies actually. Folarnimi uh, Fola, Fola Baloba uh, from Nigeria, Sandra Rodriguez from Mexico, and, and Michelle Cheng from Canada. The main task, what we have been doing recently, is this global assessment of forest education. I think and I hope that many of you have already heard about it. It was active 2021. And finally, the global assessment, the summary report was published last autumn. Uh, this is the cover page of that report. There were more than 20 people uh, doing this, this work um, heavily in, in six EUFRA regions, you know, six FA regions. And uh, Several hundreds of, of experts were uh, participating in those uh, regional consultations and almost 3000 people responded to the survey. Uh, if you haven't had a look, please. Uh, the report is there in the FAO web page and there are also regional reports. Uh, namely, you can find the uh, European report there as well. Uh, but this is now this is now over uh, except the data we have promised from you for side that the data would be available for all this is not the case yet uh, but hopefully hopefully this year finally the data also would be available for everyone if you are interested on this data and making some research uh, you can always uh, contact already um, uh, to you for people like like me or the regional regional uh, leaders you can find those addresses from their reports what's coming is a new congresses <laughs> eu for symposium on forest education will take place <clears throat> in october in finland the topic is about the merging theory and practice with help of digital tools uh, we will start in Helsinki and then move on to the forest and visit uh, one of the biggest forest industry companies, Metsa Group. They have fancy um, augmented reality systems where they can introduce uh, the forestry, Nordic forestry and, and their operations with us. And then we will go to field station Hutiela uh, Forest Field Station, and there are a couple of interesting things over there. A living lab concept, 
uh, there's a brand new uh, wooden building. It's not yet open, but 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 will be this summer. And the building itself is a laboratory. It measures, uh, monitors both the building itself and also people uh, using the building. And then we can observe um, teaching and learning, which is something I think new. I have been in many, many uh, teaching and education uh, congresses and conferences, but very, very seldom we have been able to observe the teaching. But this is this is taking place uh, in 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 the symposium. OK, uh, what else? Peter Chok already mentioned this collaborative partnership of forests, uh, which is an initiative. There is right now no uh, concrete actions, but hopefully, hopefully soon we will get some funding for this. And one of the major actions within this would be the Forestra platform. There is already uh, this kind of prototype of, of this platform and, and hopefully uh, during this um, time frame, 21, 20, 24, it would see, uh, we, will, we will see it in operation at least in some extent. Uh, other actions, um, Euphra. Research group is is planning to do a forest education textbook, which will be digital uh, and maybe also physical. But I'm not sure. The, we are we are just in the beginning. Idea is to do put together some basics in a bachelor level, and there are some good examples how how you can use the modern technology. Uh, and, and, and make this kind of a global textbooks on some issues like we have in mind in a, in a, in a uh, economic economics textbooks. And then there are some research topics going on. Um, I have named here only one, which is a seasonal forestry workers in Europe. If you are interested in this topic, please contact me. Uh, we are doing some research right now on this topic. And uh, uh, we are planning to have teachers training course uh, next year when we have the EU for World Congress in, in Stockholm. And also what's happening in Stockholm is that the new administration period will start. So I will step down. I have been doing this already two periods and uh, and there will be new coordinator and, and deputy coordinators so if you are interested in this uh, keep your eyes and uh, eyes open there will be more information how to uh, make your interest uh, visible so that's that's all in brief from eufra eufra side Thank you, and, and I hope you have a very pleasant and, and fruitful uh, meeting. Thank you, Mika. I can ensure uh, we could hear you much better than anyone else in this room before you, so the technique uh, worked uh, at least. Thank you very much. So uh, now I try to switch back to Okay. 
And uh, now we are prepared to start, start our first session with the title, The Role of Universities in Forestry and Forest Science Communication. I'm sure that uh, all uh, the attendees agree in this uh, hall and uh, online that communication has become a crucial point of today's forestry practice. There is not only a need for sharing our uh, experiences within our sector, but uh, the uh, sustainability of our everyday life depends on our success to reach the policy makers and reach people with uh, our scientific results in a sufficient way, that, uh, this, uh, which can ensure that uh, it uh, will be used in the decision-making project uh, process. So let me hand over to Mr. Cornet Zimbar, Vice Dean for Research and Foreign Affairs of the Faculty of Forestry and Associate Professor of the Institute of Geomatics and Civil Engineering. Title of his presentation is Forestry Innovations, the best way facilitating communication outside of the forestry sector. Thank you very much. It seems it's working. <coughs> Okay, dear participants, uh, let me give a presentation about our case study as a best practice. Thanks again, which dramatically changed our relation to communication. This is the content of my presentation. I quickly touch a lot of topics, including Sorry. <laughs> I think we are parallelly monitoring that all our yeah. colleagues online can also uh, see what, uh, what we are able to see. The online presentation and the on site is different. <laughs> Okay, it's we, it seems we cannot solve it. Sorry for the problem. So let me give a presentation about our best practice. No, I cannot change my... Okay, skip, skip the topic. So communication, communication is important. And uh, I can mention that some basic rules that foresters, foresters don't like to communicate. They would like to work in silence and listen to the forest. I'm going to mention uh, numerous stereotypes uh, in the next uh, slides, but uh, we must communicate our vocation, our certitude to the forest, our dedication to the forest. A few uh, stereotypes. One is we are foresters and not, not woodcutters. I also would like to mention I, all of the images I generated by AI, I, I will mention this, which, why is it important. Another, another stereotype, uh, we not randomly harvesting in the forest. We have a planned uh, forest schedule, a, a subscription we follow. We cannot har harvest anywhere. We have a strict uh, uh, annual harvesting plan and also we have 10 years plans and so on and another stereotype is the reforestation we, we it seems we soon cut all of the trees it it came it comes 
from the public, from the general media, and we uh, every time we have to explain it, we have an, we are obliged to reforest. We have an obligation to this, and the forest land use categories remain the same. Uh, and let's start our communication. In uh, 2021, uh, the university changed its model and the university contracted a, a communication company, which is Indico Com Communication. There will be, I think, next uh, uh, day, tomorrow, a, a presentation from this company. And uh, we started a discussion with this company and uh, uh, we listed all of the, our innovations and uh, uh, research topics and uh, together we select one topic which was the smart sensors and the smart forest uh, uh, project and uh, together we started a, a communication campaign but first what is uh, smart sensors and smart forest the right size this is the image how ai imagine imagines the uh, the smart sensor in the forest it's very futuristic it looks really good and uh, these sensors and are NB IoT sensor, which means narrow band Internet of Things sensors. We have been using sensors in the forest more than two decades, but this we started two years ago. This the application of these unique sensors, which includes a battery, of course, includes a, a communication uh, module, includes several sensors, and they are they have a program as well and sending the data periodically to a cloud database it we can develop an alarm system we can develop a, a monitoring system on the basis of these data and we can uh, conduct uh, long and short short-term analysis and of course the network a huge amount of these sensors uh, comprise a, a smart forest why do we use these sensors? It's important also. Uh, we have uh, more than three huge projects in the past related to climate change in uh, the forested area. We would like to predict the, uh, the future of the Hungarian forests. And unfortunately, we had only meteorologi meteorological data uh, from weather stations, which is located usually in towns, cities, and of course the center of these uh, settlements. And we don't have data for forested areas. So we started this uh, project and we, uh, our aim to, to uh, deploy these small sensors in the middle of the forest. And these sensors can measure, of course, a lot of things, uh, uh, the basic meteorological parameters like temperature, precipitation, air humidity, and soil moisture. But it can measure the, in micrometer uh, accuracy, the stem diameter grow as well. And we can uh, carry out multivariate analysis. It's uh, the basis, but we can uh, calculate the drought and the number of hot days and uh, this influence of, for example, the mortality and the biotic damages. But these sensors can uh, sense the the motion, the for example, the number of visitors in the forest. So it can be used in a lot of way. These are the real sensors. You can see it's not so cool than the AI imagine. So sorry for this. But these are the real images implemented in Shopron month is maybe uh, uh, in Thursday. You can see one of them if you uh, take a binocular review. And uh, those are the large ones. And uh, sorry, I cannot show you. So the left image is in the middle image is the large one and the right image is the small one. Th those are matchbox size uh, sensors. And uh, you can see a, a sample, a short sample, the generated output of these sensors. But go back to the communication campaign. It started in fall 2021 
and it's not ended, but the, the majority of the campaign uh, finished in, in the next spring. And uh, together with this company, we created a two page uh, press release with the title Smart Options in Forests. And it generated more than 70 written appearances in printed and online media. And after that, uh, we received uh, uh, radio station seven uh, to call to seven radio interviews and there were three t television interview as well. Image also generated by AI. And the campaign outcome, uh, we we called and drew the attention to our, to the forest and to our university as well. We received many positive feedbacks. You can uh, imagine more than seventy appearances. There was one funny uh, feedback from one of my students uh, because he mentioned he cannot listen to the radio. Uh, everywhere in the radio is smart forest and smart sensors. So I apologized for that. And I think we, we put our uh, communication position in a better, well-known, more known position, more beneficial one. A, uh, we can uh, measure uh, from the responses, from the feedbacks and the, the upcoming calls that they listen to us. They uh, are asking us about specific topics and they invite us uh, to online and uh, uh, television interviews, even debates as well. So we rapidly or dramatically changed our communication position thanks to this uh, campaign. And these are the recent and future tasks we, we are planned and we started. We listed, after this uh, successful communication, we listed all of our innovations, including all of the four institutes. And uh, we listed our research results, which are uh, able to communicate in a broader way. And uh, we, in, we collected more than 60 topics from, from the four institutes. And also we started the communication. It also uh, these three topics already communicated, which the first one is the. The combination of terrestrial and aerial laser scanning of the botanical garden, this garden surrounding us. And uh, we uh, developed a web based uh, virtual reality model or viewer to to view this uh, huge amount of data. This is a point cloud data, big data. The second topic is also there will be a presentation tomorrow ag about agroforestry. And we also have had a, a drone, uh, related drone in UAVs in forestry application uh, reports. And I mentioned AI several times uh, during the presentation, and uh, this is very new. Yesterday, uh, one of the key figure of AI uh, announced that we have just entered the new era, which is the age of AI. We were in the age of information, now we are at the age of AI, artificial intelligence. And I mentioned this image also generated by AI. Uh, I used uh, mid journey and uh, what are the benefits and the threats of the AI in the education can be uh, an upcoming topics of Silva network I think uh, will teachers will be the teachers needed is a huge question big question and how can we prepare how can we adapt and regulate these because it seems AI can replace an artist, can generate paintings, can write ChatGPT. Peter mentioned earlier, ChatGPT can write a, a program code for the student, can write an essay, a diploma, thesis. So we have to be very careful how, how we can manage it. So I really suggest this as a next topic for Silver Network. And in summary, uh, I can mention that forest engineers are, 
I think, the most capable of managing and protect and utilize forest and uh, the many ecological services. They can find the equilibrium of these services, which includes more than 80 or maybe hundreds of ecological services. And this point of view, communication is important to communicate all of the result, proje project outputs, outcomes, and our latest innovation, we can, uh, uh, from this best practice, we can, uh, we are convinced that it, it can work. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, please. And there is now uh, enough time for uh, some questions. If you will raise your head, uh, a hand, uh, one of our students will come to you with a microphone that everybody can also online can hear your question. So please feel free to uh, ask. And even the online participants can uh, give us written questions and then my colleague will have to uh, share these with you. I can understand we are a bit uh, afraid of artificial intelligence, and that's the first question there. Um, you talk about the risk of AI in terms of like, uh, how to change education because of the threat of AI. How do you see in the present moment in the science of it the uh, potential of AI to find a solution and a better model um, financers? So the question we have now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, probably this question can be addressed to all of the uh, participants, but my opinion, uh, probably we should the emphasis from theoretical one to the practical one. So the literature review, we, we should skip. We have to focus on the methodology and uh, the result of, of the research. And uh, <coughs> Yes, uh, it's really hard, but we have to focus uh, on the practic practical knowledge, not the theoretical one. It seems the AI can replace a theoretical lecturer, lecturers. I mean, this, this strengthens, uh, strengthens the outcomes of that uh, uh, report what uh, was presented also by Mika, this UFRO report. Uh, wrote about uh, a summary about the challenges in forestry education. One of the main challenges seems to be to uh, stay realistic, to stay on the, uh, on, uh, standing on both feet, as our the vice rector uh, mentioned. So basically, uh, yes, uh, we, we have to find always the practical solutions, the practical connections. I think that's what I'm going to yeah. uh, try to, to emphasize. Okay, thank you very much, Then, If you don't have any further questions, then I use the time to try again with, with sharing one of our presentations. As a we hope that we don't need any further artificial intelligence. <laughs> okay. Thank you. The aim of uh, this presentation is uh, to give an insight into the forest pedagogy training programs and courses of the University of Chopron and to show why forest pedagogy is seen as a new communication channel between forestry and society. Okay, it works. <laughs> what is forest pedagogy? Forest pedagogy is a special field of uh, environmental education. Actually, it's a qualified forest-related uh, environmental education. 
the motto of forest pedagogy is learning about the forest in the forest, which means uh, that the most authentic and right place for education is the forest. Moreover, uh, it uh, offers and promotes uh, forest as a healthy and excellent environment uh, for uh, uh, education and outdoor education. Forest pedagogy is uh, characterized by an interdisciplinary approach uh, combining and applying the knowledge and uh, the methods of uh, forestry and uh, pedagogy. And the main purpose of uh, forest uh, pedagogy is to inform the community about the tasks and objectives of uh, forestry and uh, to be bring forest nearer to the society, to the general public. Furthermore, forest pedagogy aims to raise awareness of the fact that forests are not only pure nature, but also a cultural and economic area where people are constantly present. It demonstrates the possibility of a harmonious relationship between man and nature through the example of sustainable forest management with respect for nature and plan for the long term. Forest pedagogy is provided by certified forest pedagogues who are usually foresters with the special pedagogic knowledge and skills. And of course, they are the most authentic people in the forest. OK, forest pedagogy has a wide range of uh, objectives. It has uh, educational, economical, forest related and social objectives. It uh, aims to give information about the forest ecosystem. It supports the meaningful treatment of uh, nature, raises awareness for the benefits of sustainable forestry and communicates values like respect for the nature and global and long term thinking and acting and uh, consideration uh, to life being and fellow being. Furthermore, it uh, improves the relationship with environment at local level, improves the understanding of forest management and forest multifunctional benefits, and promotes the continuing use of wood as renewable uh, material to gain social acceptance for timber harvesting and forest management. OK, uh, forest pedagogy is an innovative approach to raising children based on forest play. It offers a free space for self-discovering learning, and it means moving away from today's standardized education and teaching of children and taking into account the natural needs of growing children, such as movement, finding the necessary challenges to develop uh, develop a neurological system playing and uh, building free social relationships forest pedagogy always uses experience based learning methods and uh, actually it requires active and cooperative educational methods and approaches including activating methods learning by doing methods and uh, project learning not only transfers knowledge, but it involves the emotional part of the personality and supports practical skills and literacy. These uh, experiential learning methods uh, improves cognitive, emotional, behavior, behavioral and social competencies and skills uh, of children and adults as well. So improves the uh, creative creativity, uh, cooperative competencies, uh, communication skills, concentration and social behavior. So as you can see, uh, these experiential learning methods uh, has have a, a lot of psychological benefits as well. OK, in Hungary, uh, forest schools are educational institutions uh, providing 
the infrastructural and organizational background for forest pedagogy. And uh, there are more than uh, privately owned, more than 30 privately owned or uh, 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 state run uh, forest schools in Hungary. And each of these uh, certified forest schools uh, has a forest area of uh, 200 hectares. And uh, each of these uh, forest schools uh, are managed by forest managers. The purpose of uh, forest schools are uh, the formation and uh, development of forest friendly and environmentally conscious behavior. And forest schools are usually visited by kindergartners and school age children, but they are also available for adults. And uh, forest schools offer a wide choice of programs uh, uh, like lectures, presentations, tours, class trips, uh, camps and daycare activities. And besides of uh, forest uh, pedagogy programs, uh, other free time activities, cultural and sports uh, programs can be also included in uh, forest school programs. Uh, the duration uh, of a forest school program uh, ranges uh, from few hours uh, to several days. Uh, the shortest is a two hour forest pedagogy session and the optimal is a five day residential and complex forest school program combining uh, forest pedagogy sessions with other free time uh, activities. And uh, we are very proud uh, to have reached more than 600,000 children uh, via forest school programs in the last 10 years. Uh, as I mentioned before, forest schools must go through a certification process and meet a number of criteria. Criteria related to education and communication uh, play a crucial role in the certification process. So these are the most important criteria. The material conditions uh, that forest schools must meet uh, are as follows. Uh, the forest area registered by the forestry authority uh, is 200 hectares. And the forest school has the demonstration and teaching tools and equipment for the implementation of its programs. And um, it pays attention to the safe and accident free conduction of uh, the programs and is prepared to deal with possible emergencies. Uh, and there are two main personnel and uh, organizational conditions. Uh, firstly, it um, promotes uh, uh, the programs uh, are conducted by a forester or a forest pedagogue. And uh, secondly, the leaders of forest pedagogy classes must regularly, at least once a year, participate in the departmental meeting organized by the Forest School Department of the National Forestry Association. And uh, finally, um, the expectations uh, of the forest school program. Um, a certified forest school is able to provide programs throughout the year and is able to adapt these programs to uh, the season and the weather. And the programs correspond to the age characteristics of the target group. And of course, the location of the programs is the forest. And the number of participants in uh, forest pedagogy sessions uh, is a minimum of eight people and at least 60% of these programs are consisted of uh, forest pedagogy sessions. And what are the topics of these forest pedagogy sessions? Like forest as a living community, forest as a renewable natural resource, the uh, connection between forest and human and the relationship between uh, forest and uh, climate. Furthermore, sustainable forest management, which means an example of how people can use a uh, natural resource, an ecosystem in a way that uh, does not destroy it, but keeps it functioning while preserving its uh, natural and uh, economic uh, uh, potential. 
and uh, these um, sessions give an insight into the work of uh, the forester uh, because um, it's uh, very important to show the work of the forester that the for forester is the specialist uh, of the sustainable forestry and the forester is the specialist of human nature relationship and not the evil one who cuts down the trees. OK, and um, forest pedagogy appears in uh, several training programs uh, of the University of Chopron. So the primary communication channel is the university, maybe. Forest pedagogy as a subject uh, takes place uh, uh, in two faculties of the university, namely the Faculty of Forestry and the uh, Benedek Elek Faculty of uh, Pedagogy. And uh, at first, let me talk about uh, the Faculty of uh, Pedagogy. In the Kindergarten Educator BA training program, six subjects related to environmental education build on each other. And the cherry on the top is forest pedagogy in the fourth semester. Uh, the primary purpose of uh, forest pedagogy uh, is of this uh, subject is uh, attitude formation and knowledge expansion through lectures and outdoor seminars involving foresters. During the course, uh, the students get knowledge about the work of the forester and uh, the forest management in a very playful and experiential way. And many students meet a real forester for the first time in their life during uh, these uh, semesters or seminar. According to our experience, kindergarten teachers who have participated on forest pedagogy seminars in their university studies consider it important to uh, introduce children to the forest and the work of the forester, and they take children to uh, forest school activities more often. And it is very important that on these excursions and walks, uh, children meet the forester and learn about the work of the forester. And after the forest pedagogy sessions in the kindergarten, children always have the opportunity to process their uh, experiences uh, via forest related uh, games. And at home, children usually share their experiences with their parents, thus raising the interests of adults in forestry or in the forest. OK, oh, sorry, back. OK, um, forest pedagogy and uh, communication uh, is an integral part of the engineering education at the uh, Faculty of uh, Forestry. And uh, during the semester, students become familiar with the basic pedagogical concepts and methods, age appropriate uh, pedagogies and uh, methods of uh, experience based learning and uh, forest pedagogy. The students uh, participate uh, in field practice. It means um, forest schools activities and uh, museum pedagogy in a forest school environment. And uh, the requirements of uh, this semester are very strange at first sight for engineering st students uh, because uh, it uh, consists of uh, creative tasks like uh, project work, writing a fairy tale about forestry and uh, forest management, and, um, and collecting forest related uh, games. In the past decade, uh, at least one diploma thesis on forest pedagogy has been produced uh, in every year. Furthermore, the concept of forest pedagogy is included in the topics of uh, forest engineer state exam. Why is it very important and very useful? The aim of this course is to form students' attitudes 
and show them the ways in which forestry can be presented and uh, communicated to the public. And, uh, Forest Pedagogy postgraduate training program was accredited uh, around 2010 at the Faculty of uh, Forestry of the University of Sopron. And over the past years, we have had more than 70 students. Forest Pedagogy is a three semester course to which both engineers and educators can apply. And uh, in the first semester, the Class is basically divided into two groups depending on the students' degrees, namely the group of uh, engineers and the group of educators. And in the first semester, engineers uh, learn the basics of pedagogy and psychology, acquiring knowledge uh, about the emotional, behavior, social development of children, characteristics of uh, developmental periods, uh, group dynamics, uh, and, uh, and uh, some basic, basic uh, pedagog pedagogical knowledge, methods, uh, knowledge, methods and, uh, uh, and so on. So um, the goal is to learn how to address, teach, and motivate children and how to communicate with them. Actually, we develop engineer soft skills. And while engineers uh, learn about psychology and pedagogy, teachers acquire basic knowledge of uh, forestry, forest and wildlife uh, management. And during the second and third semester, the paths of engineers and educators finally meet and they have uh, common subjects mainly related to forest pedagogy, like methods of forest pedagogy, forest school programs, uh, communication, and uh, sectoral policy. And um, at the end uh, of uh, this um, training program, engineers receive the title uh, of uh, engineer specialized in uh, forest pedagogy, and the educators uh, will be experts for forest pedagogy. And uh, let's sum up. Uh, we believe uh, forest pedagogy means connection and communication. Uh, it's a bridge between seemingly very different faculties, namely faculty of forestry and faculty of pedagogy. It's characterized by an interdisciplinary knowledge uh, or approach combining the methods of forestry and pedagogy. And via forest pedagogy, forestry can create a new communication channel towards society and it brings nature closer to people. Why is it important? Uh, it develops environmental commitment and environment protective behaviors, promotes a deeper insight and interest of uh, society in forestry. It improves attitude of people to forest and forest management because we want people to see the forest as a renewable resource and not as an untouchable sanctuary. Finally, yet importantly, exposure to nature improves cognitive functioning and psychological well-being of children and adults as well. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And again, we have the opportunities for some questions. Maybe I will hear it without a microphone, so. Yeah. Hello, uh, I just have a question to the conditions, the material conditions for a certified forest education course. Uh, you said you need to have 200 hectares, what is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yes, 200 hectares. Uh, it's important uh, to be certified for a school. Okay, so it's not not just a plane for a school. It's a certified for a school, which is an uh, educational place. So it's the criteria. Okay, I'm not a forester, so maybe I, I, I have to ask the foresters why 200 hectares or why is it important or why this number? Okay, I, I don't know the, the exact background of this regulation, but uh, <clears throat> some, some data about Hungarian forests, uh, about 57% uh, of the forest uh, area is state owned. And uh, uh, there is uh, always a good possibility to, um, uh, to uh, establish these uh, uh, schools uh, in cooperation with these state-owned forest companies. And I think that might be a reason why they could set these limits so high. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of course, there are some private landowners who are also uh, joining these programs, but the average size of uh, private uh, forests are around two hectares. So therefore, uh, they uh, might uh, join directly to the school as, as teachers or so on. But basically, I think it's built up on the, um, on the state uh, sector. Okay. Thank you. One more question. Yes? Oh, okay. I can try without, maybe. Uh, yeah, so uh, did I get it right that forest pedagogic activities with um, schools or pupils are only um, yeah, taking place in that forest schools, or is there also a possibility if you have a forest pedagog that he looks for a suitable patch of forest that it may be stayed on the companies and takes? Because they are for activities or is it only to be placed in forest schools? Only in forest schools. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Over there, Professor Dorn. I think it's uh, sufficient with my, <laughs> my voice. Ah, the components. Okay, so in that case, otherwise uh, the people uh, which are participating online are not able to uh, okay. so and use these facilities. Well, uh, it was exactly my question, why 200, but you gave an answer. <laughs> but in context with this, it would be interesting for me to know who is responsible for deciding, for making the decision about uh, is it certificate, uh, is it um, okay or not? Who gives the certification? That would be my question to you. The, and when we are here together, I would use so I would like to use the opportunity to ask which other universities use this uh, forest pedology. Um, it's unique. Offer, offer yeah. in because in Germany we started it a couple of years ago mm -hmm. when we made a reformation of our study programs and now it first started with an elective course mm -hmm. and now it's a compulsory part of our study mm -hmm. program on bachelor level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in addition to that we offer to our students to get an official certificate mm -hmm. which is uh, under the well under the uh, the government members of the government come and are members of the exam the, the students do and finally they can have um, such a certificate in pedagogy for a Okay, sorry, and what was your first question? First because question. I, I question. forget it. Finally, is the administration uh -huh. who decides this is a certified forest school or not? Okay, the uh, National Forestry Association. There is an association uh -huh, who decide uh, whether 
it's certified or not. So they uh, they did the, they do this uh, certification process. Uh, and my co-author is uh, the, is uh, participate uh, is uh, participating in this uh, uh, certification process. So uh, member of the board, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh, but but uh, I, I missed to uh, introduce you, Ms. Katarin Totmerza. She's a clinical psychologist and assistant professor from the Institute of Educational Sciences and Psychology at our uh, Faculty of uh, Pedagogy. Uh, you have seen uh, there is a long tradition between our two faculties uh, about uh, cooperation. And just uh, to come back to, to the whole uh, Silva network, Last year from Dublin, one thing was, which was important for me, it was an important message when I returned home that uh, uh, we shall uh, see the, uh, the example of the uh, fin, uh, Finnish uh, colleagues. They told us that uh, professional uh, lecturers, professors of their faculty are uh, obliged to take part, to take some courses in pedagogy. Uh, I think they mentioned up to 18 credits they have together. And that was an idea which we uh, forwarded to our rector and we asked help from the Dean of uh, the uh, Faculty of Pedagogy. And we are proud uh, to announce that uh, in February we had a 13 uh, hours uh, course uh, where we had more than 50 participants from all the other faculties, from the uh, Forestry Educational Company and from the Forest Research Institute. And um, these more than 50 people got their uh, certificate last week. I mean, this was a superb start. And uh, uh, the leaders of our university promised that it's only the start that we can go on. And uh, of course, pedagogy is not only involving the students, the kinder, uh, the children, but also uh, uh, us professionals. So I mean, uh, it's always interesting to reach out to the other countries to ask about uh, what is the practice in, in, in uh, your uh, country? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.